actually, no, that's not true. I can't believe I tortured Marth players for this long. Um, <laughs> but yeah, now being on the receiving end of it is not super fun. But it is what it is. That's fair. That said, this is more about you, not about me. So talk to me. How's it going? How are the, you know, we gave you a, bit, a big list of stuff to work on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted, I'm just seeing how that's going. I think, uh, I've, ad I think I've adapted some things, but I think there's probably, still feels like, um, yeah, I mean, it's a work in progress, but I do feel like there's, there's definitely some improvement, or at least I'm thinking about the couple of things we are talking about, specifically the quicker aerials. Like mm -hmm. if I, uh, if I'm doing like an undershoot aerial to do it a little bit quicker, just doing quicker aerials in general, actually. Um, cause I think I am waiting for either the opponent to land before doing my aerial. I think we talked about reaction points. So I've been trying to think about that a little bit more mm -hmm. and I think I'm like almost forcing it till I, I incorporate it into my, you know, muscle memory, which I think is probably okay. But it feels a little clunky um, as I'm trying to put it into my gameplay. The yeah. breathing through getting hit, I feel like, has been very nice, actually. Um, which is not something I did before. I would always, like, do breathing between stalks or, you know, things like that. But I never thought about doing it while getting hit. So that was a good suggestion that I think I do that consciously more than the other things we talked about. Okay. And to confirm, when you say breathing through getting hit, do you also breathe when you are landing hits? Or check your breathing when you're landing hits? I guess not. I was doing it because... I guess I could do it and while, while I'm also getting hits. I'm sure it would also help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... That makes sense. Yeah, so I think that's like going to be a relatively easy change to implement. Um, when we spoke after the fact, um, the main things that you said, like there was a little bit of variability in terms of like um, you how you perceive the difficulty level to be for these, you know, for you know, updating your play really. So changing mm -hmm. timing of aerials, you said it's like you put out a three. Out of shield options could be harder, maybe around a four. Um, so I wanted to kind of speak to that a little bit and ask you which which one is the higher priority right now? Do you want to continue working on? like aerial timings and see if we can get like more mastery of that and maybe you'll find ways to make it easier in terms of how you implement it or do you want to like add you know add something like what is your level of comfort with like um having work on your plate essentially hmm i feel like i get punished harder for my out of field options or timings or that's just my feel of it Mm -hmm. I don't know how much how true that actually is. Uh, yeah, okay. so I guess maybe out of shield. Yeah, so I think that like I think that makes sense. Um, for out of shield, I th let's dive into some matches. Um, I'm gonna send you like let's do the spectator code thing. We'll play maybe like a best of three with whatever or a best of five with whatever opponent we land on in unranked, and then we'll kind of like take it from there. Um, I'm suggesting unranked because opponents tend to be a little more aggressive in it, so I think we'll get better opportunities for, uh, to see your shield work. Okay, sweet. And then, do you mind if we like set aside like I don't know, twenty minutes or something at the end to you know talk about like win conditions or stuff? That would be more for commentary, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can we can set twenty to, like twenty to fifteen minutes aside at the end. That's totally fine. Um, I, I actually don't have anyone after you, so if we run a little over, that's fine too. Like, yeah. You're Sweet. like well, assuming you have the time. I don't know what your schedule is, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I have the I have the time for sure. Yeah, so I've given you my spectator code. Uh, do you remember how this works, or do you need me to walk you through it again? No, I just do start broadcast. And just make sure the and... game is running. Yep, perfect. I see it. That worked. It. I. I mean, we won't know until we're in a game, but yeah, everything oh, right, works. Right. Everything <laughs> yeah, looks fine um, as far as this goes, for sure. One thing I'd think about, like, we're talking about timing the um, back air for when the opponent, like, gets, is, like, almost uh, falling in their jump. But, uh, like, towards the end of when the opponent's falling in their jump. But that would mean the reaction point would be before that, right? right. So maybe it's more about the rising motion of the jump and, like, the jump squad itself. Like, when they, there's kind of, like, a pause or, like, a change in their motion from dash dancing when they enter jump squat. So maybe mm -hmm. it's, like, that plus, like, the rising motion of the jump. That's more of our reaction point. Um, so that we can get the back air out in time 
for the other part. You know, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. So I should be looking for the the jump squad or the jump. Yeah. Or even the, yeah. Exactly. And the other thing is, is that like we're talking. If you do it early, your backer is going to auto cancel anyway. So it's not the worst move to miss. Um, mm -hmm. Like obviously, we want to be using good reactions, but like the reality is that we can't always react. So especially in tight scrambles, right? Like, if we don't have the distance to adequately watch the opponent when they're going up, then sometimes you just have to throw it out, and it's fine. That's just part of the game. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? I do not see a game, no. Let me double check. Oh. It says you are broadcasting. Let me just close this and relaunch. It's something like Slippy sometimes does this when I've been in Uncle Punch. Okay, launch. Uh, don't see anything yet. Can you do me a favor? Let's just exit out of this, close and rebroadcast, because I think that, yeah, I think it's because I went into Uncle Punch or something between these. I don't fully know why it does this. Alternatively, if your internet's good, we can share screen. That's also an option, but yeah, it's not coming through. It's not coming through. Let me try this again. Uh, sure. Start broadcast. Then I put your spectator ID. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this. This is... I don't know. All good. It's not your fault. I, I should ask the Slippy people, though, like, what causes this? Because I feel like this has to be something that other people have had before. Yeah. Yeah, just let me know when you're in a game. It's, uh, you connected again, though? Yep. That's, or shows connected? Okay, let's try that again. It was a Falcon anyway, so it's good that we started over. <laughs> Why, were they playing, like, like, super lame? No, 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 no. I, I just feel like I'm okay versus Falcon out of shield. Like, there's... Okay, I, I uh, see you. Martha's fine. It's always like um, Fox or Beak or Falco. Martha's also all right. I'm sure the same things would occur. Let's play a... But I feel like I get away with more against like Falcon out of mm. shield. So something I'm noticing is that when you back air, you're almost always like drifting way over for back air. Do you use the A button for your aerials or C stick? I use Z. But, uh, yeah. Okay. It's basically A, yeah. Try using C-Stick on some of these. If you think okay. that you can. Okay. So like On the back air specifically? On any aerial that is not, like, a, um, rising... On uh, any aerial that you're not doing while rising. So, yeah, and just let me... Tell me, like, after the... Like, just tell me what, like, the experience of that is like. As you're getting used to it. Because yeah. like, it's a little odd using C, but uh, the drift. Like, what? How do you find the drift, though? I mean, the drift is probably better. The drift is definitely better. You're not like yeah. you're not like doing full back <laughs> air in. I would say one of the big utilities here is that when you get if you do like a jump in place with um you can kind of like fast fall away from the opponent um while back airing like that's like a really big utility of it. Right. Yeah. You can like like well, drifting away while doing the back air. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're saying that all my back airs are going in. Yeah. Because I'm using A or Z. Yeah, you're using like A Z. You know, like you're using one of the. You're using a button. Right. Oh, is it that apparent? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I pointed uh -huh. it out, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have. Huh. Okay, that's fair. I'll. I guess that's like a tech skill thing I can try to spend time on. Like yeah. Just doing. Like, just do what's comfortable in these games, if that happens, like, but, you know, C-Stick back here, it is easier to do backers away from people with it. See what I mean? Yeah, like that, that, that particular back here, right? Yeah. Are, are your hands hmm. big or small, do you, would you say? Or I think my fingers are long, but I don't think my hands are big. If that makes sense. Okay. Kind of like piano, like piano hands. Yeah, like piano hands. <laughs> okay. Cool. 
What's your jump button? Uh, X. Oh, you're an X jumper. Okay. Yeah. I actually like X jump for um, using C stick. I find it like, I don't know. I find it like lines up well for like sliding your hand for sliding your thumb down. Maybe I'm. Maybe it's I'm... not bad. It's really not bad. I, I don't think this is like. It's just not something I'm used to doing. But I don't think it's like difficult per se. Yeah. So we'll fight somebody else after this Marth, but like, yeah, because I, I think that we need, he's not really like pressure heavy, he's more like a, a whiff punishy guy, so we yeah. need a space animal. That's okay. They should, there should be space animals online. Yeah. Oh, you went for the wall jump, but didn't get it. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Against the spaces, because they're, like, harder, don't worry so much about the C-stick stuff. Like, I don't want that to be a focus at all, because that's something you can learn independently. Um, yeah, I'll, I will I will spend some time doing that. That's, uh, that's fair critique. I find it really helps when you're dealing with, like, stuff that, like, require, like, where the placement, like, basically, I like C-Stick when the placement of the aerial is more important than the speed of the aerial. Right, I feel like I can do instant aerials really well because of Z, but, yeah, you're right. I'm not doing tricky drifts or anything like that. Or just slow ones. Just, like, minor ones. Because right. a lot of times, like, it's easy to, like, move full speed in the in the, in the the button's natural direction, but, like, yeah, moving elsewhere is, like, that's the hard part. Right. Or I, I'm doing the drift, like, a little bit later. I'm not doing, like, an instant drift. Mm-hmm. I remember when there was, like, a thing I was looking at with Risha versus Marth, and he we got, like, it... He got, like, a stomp near the edge, and he wasn't sure what to do with it, and, like, we la at, like, zero versus, um, Unicorn Pro Gamer, and I think mm -hmm. we labbed it out, because, um, it was either stomp or raptor boost, and I was just like, oh, reverse back here. And he's like, really? And then we looked at it and was like, yeah. It was, so, like, the reverse back here was just so, so, so good, just in that one situation. Like, we INE dated it and everything, and then, um, yeah, like, that would be the type of thing that would probably be locked out for you because of how you, like, you know, because of how you're, um, doing your aerial. Right. And that means that you wouldn't be able to, like, bat, like, auto, like, shuffle back air, grab a Marth player after, like, a pop-up, and then, like, kill him. And that would be unfortunate, because Marth should die when he's popped up at that position. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because, like, there wasn't, it, like, we chested the other moves, and they're just, like, knee doesn't connect, it's too slow, and then, like... Up air just barely doesn't work, like, have enough stun, so you're like, oh, reverse back here. It's perfect. But needed that, like, drift before to place it properly. Yeah, like, you had to do it basically coming up, moving forwards. Hmm. Okay. Like, it's still a very difficult back air, even with, like, proper, like, even with, like, the best input layout, like, inputs for it selected possible, it still was, like, a very difficult back air, but, like, yeah, we kind of concluded that was the right play. Or, like, a very good play, rather. Because mm -hmm. who knows what the metagame will bring next year. <laughs> One thing that I find helps is that uh, uh, recognizing that, like, stick, the stick comes out later than the button does. When you're timing, this. like, you're... Because you're, st like, moving... Pressing this, like, moving the stick is has more startup time than pushing a button does. So when you're doing your, like, back airs um, in these positions, like, uh, you have to kind of do the... I find I have to do the stick input slightly earlier than I would do, a, like, the button press. Oh. Okay. Should I Should I just uh, go for a spacey after the... I'll go for a spacey after this. Yeah. Well, I'll go after this, but yeah.
This hearth isn't bad. Oh, neat. Yeah. It feels like I'm pushing in a little bit more than... Probably. So, like, what should you do about that? Probably just reset and try to dash dance a little bit. Feels like I'm just jumping in a lot. And I should probably play like this a little bit more. Yeah. So this would be, like, a combat thing. So, remember, there's, like, the... over There's overshooting, undershooting, and whiff punishing, right? So it, he... If you're pushing in a lot and he start like, in a set way, and he starts, like, dealing with that by, um... You know, with punishing you, then you are. I can either you can either overshoot, i.e., aim back at like at the back of his zone, or you can like, you know, with punish with him because your 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 dash speed is like insane. So like, being on a draw with Falcon in terms of like a movement fight is not a bad place to be. Um, it doesn't. Yeah, it's safer than also going for like lunges just right off the bat. Like it helps establish like the terms of the fight. Um, yeah, like you just have kind of like the rock, paper, scissors to work with. Yeah. I noticed that you like didn't fast fall that aerial. Was that because you wanted the auto cancel on the up air? Mm, I probably just missed the fast fall. I, okay, good. So you know you know to fast fall that then. Yeah. Yeah, because the auto cancel window comes like. You're only saving three frames by auto canceling, but you're ke you're spending like eight or something by like h hanging out in the air. So it's like yeah, it's much better to fast fall it and just accept the auto can like accept the L cancel time. Try against a fox. Yeah, any space animal. Or sheep. Or yeah, any space. What about Peach? I guess Peach is like, she's kind of has trouble pinning us and she doesn't really like linger. <laughs> I, I, good marks. Um, Peach, I feel like it doesn't feel as bad, but I think I, I kind of guess I, I know what to look for a little bit more against Peach or. Okay. It's a little. I don't want to say slower, but. I just have more peach experience, probably. Is well, yeah. You were uh, you would have uh, faced a blade wise uh, like a good amount, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, if it's a Marth day, so be it. Like, I don't think it makes sense to like waste more time like looking for the thing we want. This is what we've been given, so this is what yeah. we're gonna go with. Um, yeah. So in the Marth matchup, Marth is like a very rock paper scissors heavy character in terms of like how he wants you to play this. So I want you to kind of like just think about with punishing. Over like undershooting, like just think about like how that would l how undershoots look with him, and like how you, what would be required in with punishing them. Um, and yeah, just kind of like just play. We'll do, we'll go from there because I think that this establishing structure in terms of how we fight these characters is a good starting point. Okay. Um, and then we can take it from there. Don't okay. over don't overthink it though. Like again, we're just like look at what he's doing and just think about how you would punish it, or like visualize how you would punish it. Don't think about it. Nice. 
Okay, so I am noticing something that's coming up a good amount. It's actually not to do with aerials. It has to do with edge guarding. Okay. You are you look uncomfortable ledge stalling. And like uh, getting off the edge. That's probably fair. Like So do you know when to, when you can get off the ledge? I think I'm doing it off of feel. So if you there's an audio cue. He kind of makes a noise when he grabs the edge. Uh, I would base it off that. You mean like this? Yeah. You haven't missed one. I think, yeah. I, I think a lot of that is just me doubting my... Doubting when to do it. Yeah, so just listen. Huh. Hmm, I should do use that more. Okay, that's fair. Oh my god. <laughs> use your ears. Like, li use your, like, listen for, like, just listen to the game as you're playing it and see if you notice what, where, like, where the audio cues are. Like, do you use audio cues for much? Not on purpose. I think it's probably, you know, just from playing the game this much. Okay. I'm probably doing it, but not... Intentionally. Consciously. Yeah, intentionally, exactly. Okay, so here's my challenge. I want you to listen to what happens when you do your movement, what happens to when either player does their movements. Like, what sounds do you hear? Um, listen for subtle things. Uh, like, a whoosh of the wind. Uh, as, like, the drop of, like, a fast fall. Um, the... the of uh, when you, someone wave dashes. Uh, the grunt when somebody jump squat enters jump squat like stuff like that because that is like that's really how you react to the like to the jump squat it's not based on like the visual usually it's based on the sound oh That is interesting. It's almost meditative. Yeah? Talk to me. What do you notice? What do you hear? A double jump from Falcon has the... that noise. It has a different sound than his jump squat, doesn't it? Alright. I kind of hear the jump squat. Oh, maybe he doesn't have an audio cue. Most characters do. Like, Sheik has the two... Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, she... Oh, I see. Huh. That's Fox. actually really... Fox and Falco out. have the... Or whatever it is. There's a tick noise when somebody techs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's, like, a thud when they hit the ground with no tech. Some moves make a splat noise, like Falcon back here. Others make a thud, like me. Some kind of make like a dong noise, like Falcon Nair. It's kind of subtle, but right. it's there. Huh. Try, uh, try a different person? Yeah, no, just keep fighting him. Oh, keep fighting? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I, right. want, I want us to embrace the sounds. Because I think that that is a part of the game that, like, really we're not, like, paying attention to. And it's so useful. I saw that bat reverse back here. <laughs> Very nice. C-stick. Very demure. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think I've ever really heard people, like, talk about this stuff, which is, like, really upsetting. Because it's, like, not upsetting, it's just, like, they're missing out. Like, so many players are missing out because of it. Because it's, like, this stuff is what makes people good. 
And so it gives you some more information than the other player. Because if they're only using visual, if they're only using their hands, like their eyes as senses, then that means that we have a huge advantage. Because like we're audio processes so much faster than visual. So we can. Is that true? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Huh? It's about like uh, 40, 30 to forty percent faster, I think. Really? Yeah. Like. I did not know that. It's like around that. Like I think that when they tested it, it was like 200 milliseconds in one study versus like 150 for the two conditions, like 140. Oh. So yeah, it's like way better. So if they're just relying on their eyes, but we have the power of our ears too, we have like a 60 millisecond advantage potentially, maybe even more. Because hmm. it's all averages, right? So like there'll be variance within the distributions themselves. So. And all of this all of this information is just given to us by the game itself. Don't have to like learn and do any fancy frame data work. It's just right here. Yeah, the te the tech noise is definitely there. When you got hit, there was like that doom. So I don't know how to like describe it, but like you know, there's a noise when like Falcon's legs hit you. Right. His double jump has a noise for sure. Hey, there's a noise with dash dancing too. Yep, there's like a it's like the sound of feet on the floor. Like it's comes almost like dust or something being kicked up. Right. It's kind of like It's almost like jittery almost. I, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Let's try to find it. It's Fox. Oh. Your shield getting hit will have cue will have audio cues. Hmm. This is this is the I, I like this audio cues part. I don't think I've I think I've just had some of these things ingrained subconsciously, but I've never like consciously tried to uh think about it the way that you're pointing out <laughs> mario definitely has a lot of audio cues <laughs> oh yeah yes so any jump of mario has a noise mm -hmm. and that goes to wave dashing as well yep because wave dashing has the root action Is... of jump right Don't try to like fo don't try to like focus on hearing just experience just hear just like experience mm. the hearing. <laughs> nice full hop near idiot. <laughs> What other common uh, audio cues? I think the jump squad makes sense. I'll, I'll try to watch out for that. Any anything else that? Hmm. So the shine, obviously. Right. Um. I would say Jigglypuff's back air, because it makes a boom, like there's a whooshing noise when she swings. Uh, All these are happening at startup, right? So the yep. noise comes immediately, Pretty and sure. then the hitbox probably comes out a little bit after that. I think it might, and they're not all on oh, frame one. On... I don't think they're all yeah. on frame one, but like they're pretty early. And again, like it's still, it's still a faster reaction. It's still faster, it occurs sooner than like um, visual, like the reaction right. to it. So it's also useful for like DI, for example. Because you're going to get hit, like if Jigglypuff's bear, I don't know when it starts, maybe it's on like frame three or something. But like, even if it like, even if the audio cue starts on frame three and the move doesn't hit you until like nine to nine through 12, which right. is actually possible to react to with audio. You know, that's enough time for, uh, um, like when factoring in hit lag, that's enough time to react with audio because there will be some hit lag when it connects on us before we can even DI it. Um, yeah, like that might help you know to hold down and away or something um, and not hold in. Right. Yeah, it's just like little things like that, really. Um, but yeah, not all of them are like frame one. I'd say Martha B is a big one. 
But Marth sword mm -hmm. swings in general are a big one. Right. Because they all they also have their own like distinct like they have like his different strikes have their own like sound like his nair is like two like they have their own rhythm like nair sounds different than fair because of when the the swings happen together. Luigi's wave dash, I'd say. Uh, right. Cyclone, like that, his down B. Uh, I'm trying to think of else. Tur Peach's turnip. Yeah, I'll find someone else. Yeah, Peach's turnip. Peach's turnip, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her double I think jump. the chic, the chic uh, two is huge, which yeah. is so obvious. I really should try to, because we're talking about reaction points in terms of. Uh, putting out my aerial, and not necessarily that I should put out my aerial when I hear the two, but something to it can guide you, to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Falco's laser is huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's see here. I'm probably ah man, I'm, I'm now that I'm paying attention to it, like stuff like. If I'm trying to tech um, Falco's down smash, mm -hmm. I'm probably going off the audio cue without realizing it, or I'm like guessing that they're about to down smash. Or you could just be out covering it. Like, there's no yeah. penalty for like just teching during your up B at a certain point, right? Right. Because either they hit you with the thing or they didn't. Falco spot dodge mm has -hmm. a. Distinct noise. I guess everyone's spot dodge is pretty loud. Yeah. Tech in place. Tech roll have a noise. Side B for sure. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that you haven't tournament wintered in a while. In a while, and you're like, we seem more comfortable with your ledge stalls. Nice ledge dash. That's good. No, but what I'm pointing out is what I'm pointing out is that like it seems like this you're really reacting well to like you're taking you're reacting well to this part in the pun. That's good. Hmm. Thank you for pointing that out. Sometimes if I'm doing something, I, I can't even tell. <laughs> oh man, consciously oh. playing is weird. What's weird about it? Hmm. Not. I guess it's foreign. I think I, I when I try to consciously play, I'm not focusing on these things. I'm focusing on what the opponent is doing um, versus, yeah. So, if I'm like consciously playing, I'm like, why am I getting hit? Well, the thing is, like, there's information about that in hidden in here. Like, if right. you know when, like, the if you know what it sounds like when say he fires a laser and we're like not moving in accordance with that based on where we are that can be that's like that helps us like understand why that happened um mm -hmm. if we're jabbing on say like a tech because and we heard the tech noise so we just panicked or something that also is information as to why we made that mistake there's tons of information that's being fed to us about like what each player is doing and why it is and is not working through this stuff yeah no that makes sense that makes sense keep fighting him keep fighting him I mean, he, he left. <laughs> oh, no. He just, he got need and he was like, I'm not about this. I lost Falco Falcon on FB. Like, I I lost an 8-2. Like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't think God that matchup. it. Yeah, I don't think that matchup's like an 8-2 on most levels. I think, right. it's like, I think it's actually gotten a lot better for Falcon. I don't even think it's like as bad on that level anymore, but. Dude, when I play Unranked, it's never like this. This is such a. <laughs> Funny coaching day. You know what? We are reacting to the things that are in front of us. Yeah. yeah As yeah, Drug yeah. Fox would say, look at the screen. We're looking at the screen. I will say that this Ganon's like, okay, whoever he is. I You know, you look less confident. You look less comfortable against him for some reason. Is it laggy or something? 
Uh, it's slight lag. But I think it's more... Um... Matchup? The idea... The, no, no, not the matchup. I think it's the idea that... It's the thing I mentioned via text. Like, oh... KK is watching me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I okay. know. No, no, no. I'm not doing that consciously. I'm, I'm just being honest. <laughs> okay, so here's what I want you to do. When you notice that you're getting that feeling of like... Uh, like that feeling of like nervousness i want you just like call it like i want you just say that you're feeling nervous and ask if right. i like and at, like, just ask like is it because yeah. i think that it's better to like confront those things quickly and move on from them than it is For to sure. just like let them like you know impact our play experience the full time the whole time absolutely no, i don't feel it now i think i felt it until we was... until we confronted it yeah right <laughs> i think say saying it out loud is always good Vish, I aspire to be as successful as you one day in life, and like, <laughs> <laughs> like if anything, I should be the You're nervous nice. one. <laughs> You're too nice. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm actually really mean. I, you're just, <laughs> I'm just so mean to people. <laughs> like you have no idea. I just don't show just... it to you because you're like very well to do and respectable. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's uh, you're too nice. I'll play yeah. one more with this guy and then leave. Yeah, get out of here. Let's go to let's go to um, forty five, and then we'll talk wind conditions. Okay. The audio cues is a very nice uh, tidbit. I, I I think it might just help me enjoy the game a little bit more, or give a a different sense of appreciating it. How so? Sorry. Like what? What? What makes you say that? Because I agree. I think it's like an entire dimension of playing the game that's like not goes undiscussed. But like, why for you is it meaningful? So, I've been doing a little bit more like kind of mindfulness types of thought processes outside of melee, and I think a lot of it is kind of like paying attention to the the grass or the trees or you know shit like that. Yeah, and like focusing on like a specific kinda, point or something, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I feel like this is kind of in that realm. And it'll probably have improvements because it's paying attention to information that is being presented to me that I probably have not been paying attention to. Yeah. Or I have, but I'm not consciously, like, using it, I think is a better way to say it. I I totally get what you mean. What I notice is that when I stop talking and I, like, watch my learners play a lot of the time, they really, like, th some of the decisions that I'm, I'm about to flag as being, like, not good th turn out to actually have something, not always, but sometimes there's something really interesting that they do with it that winds up being really powerful. Like, so the, the up air that you killed him, that you killed one of his stocks with, like, you got an up throw up air. And then you went onto the platform, and I was like, oh, that seems like a mistake. But then you, like, ev avoided his, like, fall down option and came and shield drop up aired him to, like, get the p pick up into um, a knee, which you wouldn't have been able to do with my play. Because I was just, like, just keep up airing him, like, before he lands. But because you did it differently, you actually got a better kill, like, a better setup for a kill. So I was like, oh. So I'm actually really glad. Like, it's, I find that when we slow down and we appreciate what's happening in front of us, a lot of times, you know, we're just more we are more aware of like kind of the beauty in like what people are doing or like the beauty in the yeah. world or like the game we're playing definitely definitely that was very poetic i appreciate that i know like honest and to think all we did was up air new ganon like it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, like, should i keep playing or yeah let's keep no, well i said to 45 we're at 40 oh i see yeah. i have my i don't have a clock all right uh, oh Time is a construct. Time is a construct. <laughs> I mean, I figured the the get it was. I hope we get a spacey. I hope we had one Falco. I like hope we Mario. get a spacey who's got a, like a thicker skin than that Falco. Yeah. Who lost FD and was like, "All right, like leaving. I'm d like, just no. <laughs> I'm Sheik, done." Right. Sheik. Okay, that's a character. And they're named Buck. Let's go. Oh, her needles. Needles are a huge one. Right. Ah, uh, yes. see, like that backer would have gotten shield grabbed if I didn't do. If you didn't drift, yep. Yeah. Do the thick. Hmm. 
think I've tricked myself into thinking that if I'm good enough with Z, I don't need to do the C stick aerials. I, I mean, that's... you probably not, but like, how good, like, the level of good you need to right. get there is like, I mean, I don't, I, are you hungry, Box? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, no, I, I mean, I, you're definitely right. No, I mean, like, Hungrybox literally does this. Right, right, right. He yeah. uses uh, C-Stick, or Z, rather. But he's also a freak of nature, like, and one of the best players of all time. So maybe, like, being... Maybe just because he can get away with it, that's not the best reason to, like... Yeah. I'll tell you what it really is for me. It's like, I didn't want to... I don't know. Spend the time to learn it, because I enjoyed doing it with Z. <laughs> but having you tell me to do it is like, oh, well... It, I should do it. And seeing even like basically a couple of situations already pan out because I'm doing it. I can't deny it. Yeah. Oh, shit. You bodied that Sheik player. <laughs> Keep fighting them. No. Beat them up more. Or don't. Like whatever the game gives us really. See that drift away down here? Yeah, it is. How good do you want to be? Sorry? How good do you want to be at this game? I think... Oh! I think right now... I don't know if I have, like, a... I think top 100 would be lovely. I hit it, like... A couple points in my gameplay in the past like years ago so i think that would be nice but a smaller goal than that would be like i don't know hitting grandmaster on uh rank something like that as a i think a mix of good sh of good short-term goals and good long-term goals is like the kind of like the, um, a good foundation for improvement in general um, mm -hmm. So maybe we could like work. Maybe that can be one of our goals of working together, like getting you up to like master slash grandmaster, and then right. we can kind of take it one one day at a time from there. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's very reasonable. Okay. So you do want to continue working together then? Oh, for sure. Let's yeah, go. yeah, definitely. Let's go. Nah, it's definitely very useful. I, I think you're a great coach. I appreciate that. I love your, like, I know you get this all the time, but, like, God, your commentary is so good. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I bet it'll get better after us uh, working together, though, because I'm sure I'll see the game in a different way. Uh... So I'm looking forward to that. I think, it'll get, I think it will definitely have the capacity to get better. I would just say that, like, with certain people, and you, I will trust you to know who, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying their names out loud on camera, but, like... <laughs> There's, they have some very, very, they have some very, very sad, no, um, stable ideas of how the game works. <laughs> you say stable? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now being open is good in anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, that's funny. Something I like versus characters like Marth and Sheik when you're like doing your ledge stalls is to do your ledge hop, like do your um stall a little bit sooner. And don't, like, do your double jump in your stall a little sooner, um, because then you can, like, when, when you're edge guarding, because then you can fast fall, um, when you're coming down, whereas you can't do that with the, um, like, kind of the instant, like, fast fall instant double, like, fast fall double jump ones, the ones where you're, like, aligned with the ledge. So you have a bit more control over when you grab the edge, which is sometimes useful. So as of edge guarding... Like, just jump uh, a little bit sooner. Like, about... Yeah, because then you don't you don't have to do the hack stash ne ne hack stash necessarily, depending on how far away how far from the uh, stage they are. Um, right. But you can kind of like waft and fall to the edge to like grab it slowly, or you can like fast fall to grab it quickly. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's also good versus Fox and Falco up bees, because um, like I think that we really want like especially as Falcon, it's sometimes hard to cover the low recoveries. So something that I think is really good that could be really good is grabbing the edge when they, just as they start moving so you can kind of like be intangible when when there are like hitboxes coming up um that way you don't have to like time is like hard it's difficult like you don't have to time in the same way 
Um, and I think that could be really handy. Hmm, okay. I might have to... I'll show you, I'll that. show you... No, 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 I'll show you how what I mean. Like, I'll show after... Like, uh... Oh, yeah, after this game, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, in just okay. in... While we're going over win conditions, because we can connect that to the that very easily. So the jump squat, or the jump... Has a big sound. Needles have a big sound. Any other big ones from Sheik? I don't know. You tell me. I feel That's like the giant. Ex I feel like the giant explosion kind of has a sound, but yeah. <laughs> True. Um. Yeah. Like it's down not smash. right away. It's not right away, but like yeah, down smash is a big one. Lots of people miss that one. Air dodge is a big one too. Hmm. The gasp. Yep. Air dodges in general have um, noises. I think that Zelda's doesn't, but like I don't know of any others that don't. Maybe Samus. Like basically, bad characters don't have it, but like. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I, I haven't like I haven't actually checked the cast to know if that's like a thing for sure, but like. Right. I That'd just, be a fun. That would be so funny. Oh my god, people would like people would lose their minds. Like <laughs> oh, neat. Yeah, true. Hmm, dash attack only makes a noise when it hits. Okay, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll GG's out of this. Oh, no chat. Oh, bye-bye, Buck. All right, I'll uh, just watch your screen. Yeah, I'll, we'll, defer to, we'll defer to me, so let me just get everything set up for this. So, wind conditions. Uh, remind me, why did we want to go over wind conditions? I know it's a commentary thing, but, like, is it more than that, or is there certain ones that you're struggling with? Like, talk to me. I think verbalizing it for at least the top tiers would be healthy. I think both for gameplay, uh, just the Falcon ones for sure. But yeah, it would be for commentary, like mm. simplifying it down. I would say that the win condition, a lot of win conditions are pretty universal across the cast. Um, but yeah, we can focus on the top tiers. So like the one of the, let's start with Marth because he's pretty like defined. Um, one of the most one of the classic examples of a win condition, in my opinion, is just getting someone above you if you have a decent, like, disjoint without their jump. Or just getting someone above you in a spot where they can't defend themselves. Because, like, if I get him here and he has no jump, what the hell does he do? Right. Like, he yeah, can't no. really get out until, like, he basically... He can't get out until I mess up or he dies, whichever comes first. Like, like, there's nothing mechanically about this position. If we, if he's lost his jump, there's nothing mechanically about his character that allows him to, like, beat this. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. And like, characters that mechanically can... Where this isn't as strong a win condition would be, like, Jigglypuff, maybe Peach. Peach, you have to do, it, you have to do two things. Like, Peach, it still works. You just have to get both of them. Mm-hmm. You still have to, you have to get the, the jump in float, yeah. Yeah. And, like, not necessarily both of them. Like, with Peach, like, uh, let's see. It's start. still a strong position, but, I'm yeah, I'm just thinking about other characters. Yeah, so, like, let me change her air escape real quick. So, like, nothing, and we'll just do this. Oh, no. Cooperate! All right, whatever. Why are you, okay, what is her, her trajectory? Yeah, oh, it's random. Okay, whatever. So, like, with her, like, doing, okay, she's not going to cooperate, which is annoying, but... So, like, I put her... But when I put her above me like this, she can float. And, like, that's annoying. And she can also do her up B. Um, the thing about Peach is that she doesn't really have a lot of, like, good ways of, like, defending against her... Like, against Marth coming down when she's lost her stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's not the, as powerful as it would be versus, say, Luigi. The other thing that, like... Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, makes it not as good is when the opponent is a fast faller. 
Like how quickly someone comes down matters a lot here because these two and this guy, like if they can land on a platform or they have like, they have the option to fast fall versus not fast fall. Like that's their mix up really. Um, and these two in per and these two in particular, Fox especially more like Fox more so than Falco, but they both kind of do it. They also have like the recovery specials are somewhat reasonable on stage as well. Um, mm -hmm. when you're in like juggle state. So the win conditions against these two, against these two and this guy are a little bit different. How they work, how they tend to work has more to do with putting them into a position where it's really difficult for them to recover because their weakness is how quickly they drop like rocks. So as an example, and let's turn his air escape off. Like this, like this right. spot. Like this right, is right, like right. the golden standard of like killing Fox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a, a lot of Marth's aim is to try to get into that position. Well, what can you think of a character who doesn't do that? Yeah, that's true. Against Fox, or just in general, yeah. Yeah, so that's like that's a win condition, because it attacks a very specific weakness of the character. Now, there's something cool you can do with him too. Um, so this is him. So you'll notice like he travels a certain amount of distance when he's like off stage for a B, right? Right. Okay, so let's do some let's do some frames. Um, and. Yeah, we need player two. Frame advance, cool. So I want oh, I'm willing to fighter collision as well. So I want you to I want to I want you to ask me how no sorry I want you to tell me how long his hitbox is out for. This is hit lag. It all counts as the same. It's out for a certain amount of time though. You see like he's moving. It's just mm -hmm. the counter is going up. So it's out for thirty frames. Or 29 mm -hmm. frames, something like mm -hmm. that. Right. How long do you think you're invincible upon grabbing the edge? I mean, way, way less than that. Like. So this is like cliff catch, and then we have to go into cliff weight, where we're like actually. So that's that. Like we've gotten past the eight frames where we can't do anything upon grabbing the edge. So this mm -hmm. would be like when we're actually actionable. So let's count them. So it counts on zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We should be on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh, wow. You could be invincible the entire time. Hmm. Yeah. And all you have to do is make sure that you grab the edge. Oh, wow. Uh, within eight frames of when he starts moving. Within eight frames of when he starts moving. Man, my perception of that would have been way different. Huh. See what I mean? Yeah. So if you time the grabbing the ledge, you can feel pretty safe about you, he not can't, getting hit by the, the up B. Yeah, he can't hit you with it if you do it right. Within eight frames. Huh. So let's try, but there's some cool stuff you can do with that. Actually, I'll just use um, Armada Shine Training because I think that'll be easier for this. Uh, let me show you some cool stuff that you can do with that. Because, yeah, it's all about like, what can we do? It's not, it's not just a matter of like, you know, this is neat, but like, what do I do with it? Like, we have to have a reason for doing this stuff. See what I mean? Yeah, so, uh, man. I I think I do some of this stuff without thinking about it, just because I've played this game so much, but if you ask me to... See? Like, I do that, but I wouldn't... So I, if I was doing that, I was doing it more because of the invincibility off of grabbing the edge, but not timing it. I mean, I probably am doing it, but... Yeah. And you can see, like, he just goes through me. Yeah. So, I have a lot of problem trying to do this particular thing versus Sheik's up B. I, it feels a lot more difficult versus Sheik's up B than it is Fox Falco's. I know it's a complete... I mean, Fox, but... Okay, so, like, what are you trying to do versus hers? I'm trying to time my invincibility in the same way that I'm timing my invincibility against Fox's up B. So and what... then I just get at the second poof a lot of times. Oh, on she's stage. doing the double poof. Okay. Yeah. So this is a misunderstanding about how the edge guard tree works because she you generally shouldn't be allowing her to do that. 
Let okay. Me, let me show you. So, when we have Falcon here, I'll have him grown on the edge, and then Sheik, I will take control of your mind for just a moment. So, in order for her to, like, double poof here, this is what has to happen. Like, she has to get to a very specific point where, like, she can. She has to get there, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the problem with that, because, like, she can also do it from, like, over here, but... Yeah, I get hit, like, that a lot. You have to hit her as she's coming up. Got that's, it. That's the problem here. So I'll show you mm. why. So, like, let's turn fight. Let's turn our handy-dandy fighter collision on. You'll notice she's not invincible right away. What's the moment I should try to attack, just so I can see it, like... So once she once she and so edge guarding is all about the spaces somebody has to go into. So when she's recovering off stage like this, right? Yeah. Where does she have to travel to? She has to like if she as soon as she comes into like the spot that sets this up, that should be a cue that you have like when she goes to like here like um to go to like here, um like at that point. The second she goes into that spot that, like, links up with the stage like that, you should be just, like, back airing her. Like, fall off back air or something. Yeah, exactly. Hmm, can you pause it at, like, that exact, like, uh, around where? It's, like, a little bit diagonally down, like, around... Okay, let me just, like, try to... It's, like, around here. Around there, okay. And then from there, I mean, yeah, it's perfect for fall back air. I am definitely waiting for Sheik to do the up B. And then I'm trying to attack it when... It's actually the... even higher than that. Like, it's around, like, it's around, like, this height. So if she's, like, up... If she up bees near your legs, basically. And then do it at the... Before the startup of the up B. Just start... Just do a back air. Yeah, so, like, let's do... Save positions. And, uh... Record. Oh, wait. I don't have my jump. Never mind. Okay, so I'll have to redo this, but like you get you you kind of get you kind of get what I mean. Like she has mm -hmm. to like she has to like act, like up B and the, she has to up B at that at a, after a certain point. Um, once she has to up once she has to up B, then there's no reason to not just like there's no reason to not um, yeah. Yeah, I am waiting too long. Yeah, like. Because I, like, messed up this recording, I don't think I'll be able to get her. But you see where, like, the window is. Oh, I did get her. Yeah. Like, at best, when I go for this edge guard, I, like, don't get hit by the upbeat because my aerial is kind of, you know, yeah, canceling it out. But yeah, it's, like, basically, like, when she's, like, when she comes up, like, in that zone, yeah, just, like, ledge hop reverse up air kind of thing. Or, like, ledge hop back air. Or fall off back air. Any of but them. the key is to do it probably faster than what I'm doing. I'm waiting for, like, the up B animation as my cue, but my cue should be her entering the, the position. position. Yeah. The position of the Sheik. Got it. Okay. Because, yeah, the, okay. Other, the other thing here is that, like, let's, um, let's like, pretend Falcon's on the edge, because it's going to be hard for me to, like, do all of this perfectly. But, like, let's say that, like, let's say Falcon's on the edge here. Um, yeah, control... Let's say Falcon's on the edge here. If I draw, if I don't go, if you go for that ledge hop back air, and I don't because you've like, and I don't do that like snap to edge thing, I don't have like, it's not like I have a really good way of like grabbing the edge either. Like as long as you do it so that it also covers me coming up for that, it doesn't matter, right? So mm -hmm. you're really, you're trying to cover like me doing, so there's two timings you're trying to cover. There's, tr there's me doing this and me doing this. And they're covered by the same, like, because one of them happens before the other, you can, I think, cover them both with the same up air or back air pretty consistently. But the trick is, like, you just want to make sure that, like, your hand is over, is hitting not just this one, but also, the, um, like, this kind of thing, where she snaps with the first part of it. Right. Because if I have to do the second warp, like, Sheik's up, he has two warps. There's the first one where she, like, grabs the edge like this, and then the second one where she actually, like, explodes and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The name of the game with Sheik's at B is, if she's close to the edge, do not let her grab with this thing. Do not let her grab with this thing, or have enough intangibility to, like, stop the double poof, or just, like, have enough invincibility to outlast both of them. Outlasting both of them is also just possible. Like, the hitboxes are pretty close together, so let's see here. Let's see when they take place, because I think this looks right. So that's one. 
So when does this happen in the animation? Oh wait, that's wrong character. So 28, and then it explodes. I guess it's because of the it's glitching technically um, when mm -hmm. it does when we do this. But they're pretty close together. You see what I mean? Right. Yeah. So let's actually find out. Let's we'll have to do a manual count. So this is on 30. And then the next hitbox happens. How many frames later? Like I think it was like four or five. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like the other way that you could do it is because when does her aerial at B hit? Like, or sorry, when does she get on stage for this animation? So twenty. So yeah, when she touches there, it just automatically triggers. So then, yeah. So around, like, yeah, basically when she comes up and touches and grabs the edge, the other way that you could do it as the Falcon is you could just do the time your refresh so that when she's coming up, you're able to, like, fal you just grab the edge as she's going, and just as she's about to go over it. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you see I, what I, I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Like, here, we'll just have him work. Actually, you know what? We'll have Falcon record, sure. Um, okay, so save positions, record. Boom, 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 boom. Playback. And then we'll have her control. See what I mean? Like, she doesn't, he doesn't wow. get hit by it. Wow, okay. It's... You have, like, half a... You have over half a second of invincibility to work with. Like, you'll be fine. It, it's... Right. <laughs> like, there I think I'm underestimating how much invincibility I get off of this... Yeah. Refresh. Agreed. And I would say that, like, the other thing I'd add is that if you don't know when you can let go of the edge with, like, enough precision, then it's probably really difficult to do this kind of edge guard as well. Because, mm -hmm. But I think that knowing the audio cue on Falcon's edge release is also going to help you, like, do this better. Right. So as soon as I hear that two kind of noise from Falcon... Yeah. The yeah. big thing is, like, you just want to make sure that she doesn't steal the edge from you or something, but, like... Yeah, that's just that's just like that's why I like doing things that have adjustable timings when edge guarding her, um, mm -hmm. because she, yeah, she's gonna try to use her ninja trickery and don't let her. Um, of the one thing that I would say that wind conditions almost always have in common is that there's a lack of counterplay f available to the like the the person being who's caught in the wind condition basically doesn't have access to their their own like ways of advancing their game plan. Um, right. until this situation is either resolved or escaped. Um, mm -hmm. and usually resol res it resolving is usually like a stock lost or like you took like 8 trillion damage or something like that. It's a really big penalty. Um, mm -hmm. like Ice Climber's grab would be like a really big example of that. You could also say that like when Sheik is uh, recovering, like being rinsed and repeated, like that would also be a big one. Uh, the Sheik Ditto chain grab is big, um... Getting Fox off stage below the stage line um, without his jump, that's huge because he's basically, he's dead um, in a lot of cases. Or, like, has to, like, make a really big outplay with his recovery in order to, like, overcome his situation. Uh, Falco's mm -hmm. similar. Um, Falcon's kind of a combination of that and being rinse repeated. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and different characters, um, floaties in general, floaties are a little bit different. Honestly, one of the most useful things about floaties as characters for tournament play is that they are more le they are less susceptible to the lethal win conditions. Because, yeah, yeah like, it, it, they just have better... Like, their defense is a real, like, asset there. Um, I think it's not a surprise that the, wor that the weaker floaties, like, um, I would argue Luigi, uh, Kirby, Zelda... The ones are, that are, like, Mute, uh, Mewtwo's kind of a weird case... But, like, the ones that are, like, kind of the better floaties are typically the ones that either have, like, overpowering offense in the way that, like, Ice Climbers or Jigglypuff might, um, mm -hmm. in that they just, like, are so explosive. Or they're incredibly good at survival in a way that, like, Peach would be, Jigglypuff would be, and Samus would be. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of, like, the two kind of... Um, there's, like, only, like, these would be the genders of floaty. No, not making that joke. But, um, yeah, it would be, like... <laughs> you know, um... But I'd say that that's, like, a really important, like, general idea of, uh, 
Like, that's kind of, like, the high-level view of, like, what the different characters tend to be good at. Like, mm-hmm. the faster your falling speed, the more you tend to lean towards being, like, proactive about, like, creating your own... About, like, establishing your win condition. The more buoyant you are, generally there's more of a balance about, like, denying the opponent access to their win condition, creating the condition... Like, cr- like using your health bar as a resource... Um, and like managing how effectively you're put into those spots because your your own win conditions tend to not be quite as good in some ways. Um, but the balance is is that you tend to have more insulation against the opponents. Um, so yeah, they're like so they're, they're they're a little bit more complicated in certain ways. Fast followers right. and like Marth and Sheik and stuff who can basically just like as soon as they have a sliver of time to work with or a sliver of opportunity, they can basically just like set up their plan again, um, mm-hmm. which is one of their main superpowers. Yeah, I think I think even just you you talking about the wind conditions of Marth versus you know the characters that are above you, it made me think of Yoshi in particular and how Yoshi's hit kind of mitigates some of Marth's wind condition, uh, specifically like while being above. Yeah, he he changes the rules of the game completely. That's his right. Scene. Like he's kind of yeah. He's he's interesting because he can kind of keep people above him too but he uses his um super he uses his health bar to do it a little bit like mm-hmm. he doesn't have as as dominating as of disjoints as like the three that really do the keep the opponent above me forever strategy are like this guy him him or her rather him him kind of can kind of definitely like, it's not many characters that actually do that, like, the juggle the opponent forever strategy, because in order for you to do it, you have to have, like, disjointed moves and, like, pretty, and a launcher up air. Um, or just, like, even more disjointed moves, or, like, something really powerful that, like, kind of serves the role of putting the opponent off stage. Like, it transitions from juggle state to, like, edge guard, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Yoshi doesn't have the disjoints to do this on enough of his moves for him to be able to do this strategy on paper. But what he has is he has his like shield his broken shield drop, he has the eggs, and then he has his double jump arm his double jump armor as well. So he has like this very ramshackle way of doing it, but it works. Um, and that I think is actually pretty fascinating. But the really cool thing about him is how he like also turns that situation on its head when someone's trying to do it to him, unless they're named Captain Falcon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like it oh. Yeah. Pikachu is in, like, Pikachu was in a similar position with all of Axe's tricks, but, like, the metagame has, like, moved sufficiently far that, like, non-Zane Marth can sometimes beat this character because they figured out, like, un- the ins and outs enough that they have, like, odds on him. Um, because he's he is ultimately a pretty traditional character, even if he has, like, certain moves that are, like, Pikachu has weird moves that break the rules. Yoshi is a, Yoshi's a weird character that breaks the rules. And that's right. where I draw the distinction between them. Yeah, and then you can kind of like move around different. You, you can play around the different moves that Pikachu has, but it's hard to play around the entire character itself. Yeah, like Yoshi, literally, it's all it's baked into his attributes. It's not mm-hmm. something that you can isolate to like a specific move, like Pikachu's a B or something. Yoshi right. is. It's like Yoshi is weird. Pikachu's yeah. moves are weird, and that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah, um, it still operates under the same physics. Yeah, I think that, like, he's weird, they're weird, she's weird. She's surprisingly straight, like, surprisingly not weird, but also weird at the same time. Like, she's she's kind of her own bucket. Um, after Samus, I go back and forth on. I feel like she and Peach are similar in that way. But I don't think mm-hmm. there's that, like, my one criticism of this game is usually that there aren't many, like, unique characters. There aren't characters that are, like, truly unique to each other, other than, like, a handful and they also happen to be the char- a lot of the characters that everyone hates. Funny how <laughs> yeah. that happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. How much more time do you have? I mean, I'll, I'll keep po- I'll keep poking your brain about wind conditions if you give me the time. You know but what? Let, you... let we'll we'll go to thirty. If if you'll <laughs> yeah, right. as long as you'll pay me for it, we'll go to thirty. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I'm <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah, I'm down to yeah. extend it. What are the what would you say the wind conditions of? We can just we went through Marth. We can just kind of go through a couple other characters. I mean, like the ones you want to. I mean, like so. The thing is, the top tiers in general are good because they can access a whole like this like the game's like basic ones. So like Sheik, Marth, and Falcon. I'd argue Fox as well, and Jigglypuff and Falco. Like literally all of them can access like Juggle State, in some capacity, and transition that into some kind of corner carry, that creates an edge guard. 
So like yeah, the Sheik, Sheik, Marth, Falcon, Fox, Falco, Puff, like they all can do that in some capacity. Right. There's they have different strengths and like Jigglypuff doesn't really like juggle state people out of the game, but like man, like one, but that's not her goal. She wants to like use a juggle state long enough, like basically as a means to an end, um, to like create edge guard. That's really, like, one of her bread and butters when it comes to, like, being an effective character. Like, popping someone up with, like, an up air, then transitioning to back air carry, right? Um, mm -hmm. How is that different from some of the other juggle states? Sure. So, with Marth, it's more, like, Marth is willing to keep you above him, if need be, forever. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Jiggly, Jiggly, Jigglypuff is less inclined to want to do that. She's... Correct. Jigglypuff wants to push you off stage a bit more. Correct. Similarly, Fox has, well, it's possible that with his speed and his advantage state, he probably could keep you above him forever. He also just doesn't have to, because you will die at 90 or 110 or whatever your character's like number is at some point, because mm -hmm. up air will kill you. Right. Falco is interesting because he wants to push people to the edge, but he wants to do it in very specific ways. Um, here, let's actually... So something I did with Moki... Um, when I was kind of, like, talking about how Falco's kind of a weirdo in a lot of ways. Like, he plays by the rules, but doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. let's actually do advanced camera mode, and we'll do this, and, uh, how do you pan? It's, like, yeah, here. So this is, like, this is Battlefield, right? Mm hmm So, what I, you can see my mouse, right? Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. We're gonna make a diagram, because I want to make a diagram. So, if we take falco where's my sniffing tool please cooperate computer thank you all right so this is um this is what we're going to use as our base for our diagram match um which we can see and now i can now label so there's certain zones that exist on the stage that falco that are that act as the the kill spot the kill zones for falco so i would say any like because anything i would say that exists on this yellow line or behind it um, is dead versus this character. Can you think of... Can, wh why is that? As in, if, if uh, the opponent against Falco is past this line, they're probably dead? Because uh, of down if, air? Yeah, because if, if the opponent... Like, let's say that this is, like, an opponent he's fighting, right? Like, like let's say this is Marth. Mm -hmm. um, if Marth is hit here, can he land on stage from down air without, like, an incredible Herculean smash GI input? No, yeah. So yeah. he just goes down and dies, right? Assuming that, like, mm -hmm. assuming that he gets knocked, like, he, he, the opponent is in a, he might, based on damage, be like able to make it back, but like you're start, you see the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. There's like a, there's a line that exists around here that goes up with da that like, and the height of the line increases with that da damage. Like it's maybe here sometimes, maybe it's here sometimes, maybe it stops here. Like you see what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, so this could be like 30, this could be like 60, this could be like 90, and so forth. These are just made up numbers, but the idea is that like at as long as the opponent um, is hit in this spot by down air going this way, they just are, they are deleted. What this also means though, is that there is another line that exists behind this one, maybe around here, that, run, that runs in the same way, um, that Maybe it actually is, has a little bit more leniency. It might be like more like this. What do you think this line represents in terms of like a threat zone? Where? Anything in this in between zone, like in between the um, the green line, like in where the green line and the yellow line are, and yeah. Where down air doesn't KO or shine potentially leads to down air. It's where there's a DI mix up. Mmm. Because you can push people with your combos, right? So this is where, like, Nair, the zone where, like, Nair into Dare, or Fair into Dare and stuff like that is, like, lethal if you fail the 50-50. Hmm, I see what you're saying. So yeah. that position is also great for Falco, because if they mm -hmm. don't DI the Nair or the Shine or whatever properly, then they still get KO'd. Yeah. Let's add another one for funsies. Um, up here, uh, I need a box. Cool. What do you think this is? Where nine KOs? Yeah. And like this will change as percent increases. Like we've talked about that before too. But like mm -hmm. as the somebody's percent increases, like, you know, there's be there's gonna be additional lines. So like, you know, maybe it's here later, maybe it's here later. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like there is knockback growth on Shine. So 
I would say that, like, Falco, the cool thing, and, like, you could also, in certain matchups, also, uh, consider this box, in general, to be, like, a Shine Up B territory. Mm-hmm. Like, this put box up to here, like, the, basically anything in this airspace could be considered Shine Up, like, the Shine Up B zone. But there's only, like, there, there's certain, like, caveats with it, because you can't, like, go too far, like, you can't fly off stage and die, so, like, maybe, it probably doesn't go, like, the full length of the stage, but, like, maybe around here. I think, like, around here, you probably could make a case that this there is something like that there. Right. So there's a lot of really, like, there's a lot of spots on the stage where Falco is, like, deadlier than normal. Um, a lot of them exist, like, his comp, because he's slow, he has to, like, play a lot of positional rules in a, in a way that, like, Peach does. But his tools are also more powerful than hers in terms of their, like, deadliness. So... Yeah, I find that this kind of structure lends itself well to him. What I what's also what I also want to point out is there's a spot. There are spots between there are kind of like safe zones against him too. Like I would argue that this space in general against him is actually pretty a pretty good place to be like the space above these side platforms around here because you have like different ways out that involve like aiming for here. You can also aim for here. You have the platform edge cancels too. Um you see what I you see what I'm getting at, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. So like you and have Falco has to kind of like commit to a a jump to to kind of contest that. Exactly. So these are good spots to recover into, generally speaking. Like or like to aim your di. Like anything in this box in into one of these boxes around here and here, he still has counterplay because like at certain points he can still play for the fifty fifty, um with like that. But there's also parts of the box where that are more difficult to do that in than others. Like I would argue that this pocket here. Is a lot, or this pocket over here, is a lot safer than this section. So you, you see how that works? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm hmm. I have a question. So you, you mentioned that Falco positionally will play a lot like Peach because of Falco's speed. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I mean, like, I don't really know what there is to talk about, but like, sure, we can go over that. So let me ask you if, you, if you're here with any other, with any other top tier character, um, what is, what, uh, what, what do you think that they might be doing? Like, what are some basic things? Like, let's say there's, a, there's, um, instead of Falco, I'm playing as Marth, Fox, Sheik, or Captain Falcon. Um, what mm -hmm. are some things I might be doing here? As the Sheik? As any of those four characters. Um, I guess undershooting, overshooting, or... No, 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 give me, give me an act, give me actions. Not like, not pat, not like types of actions. I want to like actual moves in the game, like dash. Okay. Like I'm dashing, wave dashing, forward tilting, up smashing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess dash dancing would be good. Um, yeah. wave dashing. So what's the? So yeah, exactly. Moving. So what's yeah, the problem moving. with Falco? It's not quite as fast. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does he have to do to compensate that? He does lasers or. Kind of play a little bit defensively, I guess. Or he tries to like use his jump to like kind of like zone space. All right. Oh my God! Is that sounds kind of like this other character we know? <laughs> <laughs> I've just never heard that comparison made, so it's very. But it makes sense though. No, it makes sense. It, it really does make sense, but. Yeah, because like, what is the la like the laser? What is the purpose of this laser? It's basically to pin the opponent in some way so that I can decide how I'm going in, right? Mm-hmm. But what are the turnips and float doing here? Yeah, pretty pretty similar. I can yeah. see the, the 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 similarities between laser and turnip, but because of the speed of Falco, it kind of the speed and the jumps of Falco and Peach kind of make them also play in a similar way, at least in that regard. Yeah. So like the way I think of Peach in this kind of spot is her t her her float basically allows her to like so falco wants to get like kind of specific like attack angles like let's move Sheik over like here because like i feel like he wants to fight her in this kind of position more um he, he likes this kind of angle like in general like coming down in a way where his like down air is just like kind of like dominates the interaction right yeah but like part of his challenge is that like he doesn't really have, like, he has to, like, interact with stage features or, like, plan a little bit or use the laser to, like, support that um, because of, like, his speed. Well, the cool thing about Peach is that she can set up her good angle with the float and kind of hold it. 
Right. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. So well. instead of her having to like her having to go all the way up and coming down, which she, what she does is she just like stops here. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, but she still wants that same kind of. That's still that position. diagonal. Yeah. That diagonal. And then the other thing I'd add is like because she's got good pressure, the other spot that she tends to want in terms of like initiation is this kind of like low to the ground thing. Mhm. Mm Which she can also set up with her float. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Ah, that's a that's a cool comparison. You're very smart. I know everything, Dish. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you, do, you do know everything. <laughs> I'm just trying to absorb some of your knowledge. <laughs> you know, Vish, we're. Vi I like to think of us as like friends slash acquaintances. Like we've known each other a long time. We're on good terms. I I hope. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, there's no need. There's no need to butter me up. If you think I'm crazy, you can say so. No, no, no. I just <laughs> I like these comparisons because I I think what I'm really getting out of this session is thinking about the game in a different way. You know, I mean, I think she played this game for so long, so it's very nice to hear these kind of perspectives from. Do you want to know something that we were wrong about? like in the early theory days like something that's like probably still written down and people still believe but that we were completely off the mark on what, what is it so long ago when this game when the earth was young and dinosaurs were and still cooling and we you know had to rub pikachus together for electricity and, you know like hugs myself <laughs> and cactuar were like talking one day no i'm kidding hugs was not there i just like calling them an old um but yeah we something we got wrong was that we used to think that dash was the most powerful movement like it was the most powerful opener but it isn't because if you think about the top tier characters it's not a good dash game that they all have in common and when we add into the high tiers it's still not a good dash game that's like the most common denominator it's the aerials the air is more important because think about it like you've got this chic most of her moving up in the tier list has been from her shield drop game and like moving away from like the kind of like measured um, tilt, like tilt a uh, footsie style, um, but developing, but finding ways to like make her dash shine with like run cancels and such, a la Plup, um, or shield drop, like Plup and Jmook are kind of like that. Um, and actually Plup and Jmook and Spark are also pretty big on like making her air game more like a bigger part of her. Like you look at all the double aerial Spark does, uh, you look at Plup's shield, like legendary shield drop game. Um, mm -hmm. even Jmook is like leaning more into the air in a lot of, in a lot of his cases. And like, I think that's like one of the big things we got wrong. We thought that dash was the most important base move, like base movement, um, because of its like micro game flexibility. It is uniquely the only primary opener between like jump uh shield like the the air which is basically initiated by jump or shield drop or like being on a platform um and wave dash uh between the three of between those three like those three kind of like styles the only one that is fully actionable every single frame throughout is dash so people thought that was the most powerful one but what's happening right now is the restrictions to dash, i.e. the fact that you don't have access to a lot of your attacks is becoming a real liability for people. Because with the movement, with the what people are figuring out with the air is that you can be very, very sneaky and very subtle about how you position your attacks, and aerials are the best attacks in the game. So with that in mind, there's an efficiency advantage. The There is a... Um, yeah, there's just like the quality differential of the tools you access within those states. It's just, it's something that Dash is having trouble ac accounting for because it tends to also play more reactively because of, you know, because of its restrictions, but because of what its strengths are. Um, so you're seeing like a, a change in that, like in what's important, I'd say, um, in the top characters. And I think one of the best examples, like one of the proof is like one of the biggest pieces of evidence is Cody's Fox. Mm -hmm. Because we're moving away from the dash dance fox, and more towards full hop fox, and I don't think that that's I don't think that's a coincidence because Cody hits so much harder than any fo any top any best fox that came before him, and it's largely due to the fact that the thing the hits he's taking are just better because he has access to them. Because he's doing aerial hits versus uh, mm -hmm. dashing hits. Right. So he gets to hit like back airs and up airs instead of like because you can short hop aerial near the ground, sure, but like, um, you know, he's hitting back airs and up airs instead of nairs and drills. Like, God, like if between the two of them, who's gonna come out on top, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like it's not even like, close. Like one, like the full hopper, like blows the other one. Like from a pure damage perspective, the full hopper blows the other fox out of the water like ten out of ten times. Right. The only thing that really contests that would be maybe grabbing, but you would get the same opening from the aerials typically because the grab is trying to lead into an aerial anyway. Mm-hmm. We're cutting out the middleman. Yeah. Huh. That's an interesting point. Mm. Yeah. And it's the one thing they all have in common because Falco. Fox, Sheik, Marth, Puff, uh, Falcon. Like, what did all the top Falcon? There we go. Not the other one. Um, what do all the what all what do all six of them have in common? It's their aerials. If we include Peach and Yoshi in this model because of like their ability to win majors as well in like early, in other metas or like Oms is kind of a freak of nature um, and hasn't replicated his success of that like stretch. But like, if we still include those characters as being able to win open open majors in an era. Um, yeah, it's it's still aerials. It's still aerials. That's the, that's the through line. It's not the others. Yeah, because I mean, some of those characters you mentioned don't have great dashes anyway, but they all do have great aerials, huh? Mm -hmm. That's that's very interesting. And I think the thing that we didn't take in the thing we couldn't have known that it was gonna like move in this direction because for some reason shield drop was the last um, main was the last key technique. I'd argue, like the last metagame defining technique, um, other th that was that's non-defensive, that isn't defensive or micro-based. It's like the last big picture technique that really we found that define that was meta-defining, and it just happened to be found in like 2014, whereas everything else was found before, like significantly earlier than that. So right, uh, it skewed the the way we looked at it. This tier list looks completely different, in my opinion, if we find shield drop as the same time as the others. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, Donkey Kong would have been up earlier. Donkey Kong's probably the best character in that world. Like, honestly, like... <laughs> okay, I don't know about that one, but, like... You can see what I mean, though, right? It's so interesting how the the forces that shape the metagame for this game. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's a player, sometimes it's just we were... Like, sometimes it's just it happened to be the one thing we didn't find. Yeah, the discoveries definitely shape a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So, did you learn a lot? Yeah, no, this was a great session. I, I like that a lot. That was. I'll probably separate a like theory bit at the end from it, so like it'll still be posted, but like as a separate thing. But I really sure. enjoyed being able to like talk about some of these things because like I don't really. It's so rare I get to like share some of that. Some of like. It's so rare I get to share experiences um, holistically like this, uh, that span from the beginning of the game up to now because generally speaking what i get to talk about is like modern melee um and that's that's lovely modern melee is very exciting it's very active it's always growing but yeah it's cool seeing i don't know i have an appreciation for like the through like the how it got here i guess um that's no, always been really sense. cool yeah. no yeah yeah please please uh separate however you want that, that was that was very eye-opening i think yeah so i know that we're at time let me ask you real quick yeah. What are your thoughts on um? No. So what are your th what do you think you're gonna work on? I get the impression that there's certain things that are higher priority than others, and that's totally normal and should be expected. But what is uh, what stands out to you? I think in solo practice, I'm gonna use more C stick and you know try to work on aerial drifts with C stick because I think that's just like a tech skill comfort issue. And then paying attention to sound cues. And I might hit you up for more sound cues that I could think about. Um, yeah, and totally fine. refreshing refreshing properly with Falcon. I think it's actually relatively easy when I do the, the drop-down refresh. I think a lot of the reasons why I don't do it is... Fear. There was some, yeah, exactly. There was some negative experience that I've had that my mind remembers, like, oh my god, I got like forward aired forward and died, and so I just go to the the stage instead, and I just need to get more comfortable doing it, even if it doesn't work out all the time, because there's a lot of value to it, refreshing properly like that, especially versus chic, like you showed. Perfect. So I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that our takeaways. So let me just jot those down. So we're gonna say we're continuing um, to build a knowledge base, um, knowledge base, and ex no through ex uh, audio cues through exploration, um, mm -hmm. cues through 
mindful uh, play and observation. Um, we're also gonna say refresh, no, uh, can build on, no, build on refreshing during edge guard to use, in, um, edge guard to uh, deny, to prevent, rever to prevent um, up B reverse, from rever um, up B reversals. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, um, during it, yeah, 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 that makes sense. And the last one that let's say, sorry, was it, what was the other one? I think it was, so it was to do, was it to do solo practice or did I space the, on the, that? The, the C stick, um, C stick and aerial, aerials. C stick aerials. Okay. Wonderful. I think this is enough to get you started. I don't want to overload your plate either because we are meeting again on uh, Thursday, I believe. So yeah. we'll take. I'll leave you to it. We'll take it from there. And yeah, if you have any questions about the content we did, we went over today. As always, you know, hit me up. I, I do want you to get this stuff. So yeah, feel free to ask. Sweet. Thank you. No, those those are a great session. I appreciate it. Amazing. Take care, Vish. Bye bye. Thank you.